Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another episode of Bedtime Stories. Thank you for joining me today. And I'm going to ask you the usual question. Have you brushed your teeth? Are you cosy in your PJs? If so, let's get started. So the story that I'm going to start with today is the one that we read um, in our last episode of Bedtime Stories of Noah and his ark, Prophet Nuh. So we didn't get to finish that, did we? So should we continue it? Let's find out what happened next. After he boarded the ark with the animals as commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let's find out what happened next. How many of you lovelies know the story of Prophet Nuh? And if you know it, that's fantastic. You can share it with all your siblings. Ah, I found the page. Prophet Nuh and the Ark. Prophet Nuh, the Messenger of Allah, and his companions thanked Allah for saving them from such a devastating flood. Everyone happily came out of the Ark. The animals, they were led to safety. Prophet Nuh prayed, Lord, let my landing from this Ark be blessed, for you alone make me land in safety. So he makes a quick prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him in his landing. The city of many columns. The Ad people were the descendants of Iram, one of the grandsons of the Prophet Nuh, along with the followers and the Prophet Nuh, their forefathers, had settled in the ancient Yemen. The Ad people were very rich. They were known as the people of the many-columned city in Iram. At first they followed the religion of Prophet Nuh, but then when they began to prosper they fell into bad ways. Then Allah chose the Prophet Hud from amongst themselves to warn them of the sincere, trustworthy advisor. The Prophet Hood told them, Serve Allah. My people, you have no God but Him. You have no God but Him, and the notions have and the notions you have are all false, which means the other gods they're all false. But the elders of the tribe rejected him, calling him a foolish man and a liar. Oh dear, that's not very nice. Prophet Hood continued to warn them. If you build a strong fortress, hoping that, they, that it may last forever, when you exercise your power, and you act like cruel tyrants. Fear Allah and follow me, they would proudly say. Who is mightier than us? Who is stronger than us? And puffed up with pride and the feeling that they were greater. They were greater than everyone. They went on denying the word of Allah and so on howling a violent gale and which they would lose one of them for seven nights and eight days in a row destroyed them as though they had been a hollow trunks of a palm tree finally a terrible blast of wind destroyed the wrongdoers and their land and when morning came there was nothing to be seen but the ruined houses and that's the punishment of your Lord. The lesson of this story is that one should not lose humility. If one becomes successful, one should give full credit for one's feasts and blessings to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In doing so, one's success must be ruined in the same way as the great homes of the people of Ad by the great storm sent by Allah. And this was done because they were ungrateful. They did not thank Allah for everything that they had. 
So we must always praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything that we get. The Camel of Prophet Saleh. The Prophet Saleh, a prophet born into the Tamud tribe, was sent to mankind in the northern Arabia after the great flood. Disappointed to see his people following wrong ways, he asked them to pray to the Lord alone, saying, Remember, he made you hairs of Ad and provided you with the beautiful land and provided you with lots of things. You have built mountains on its plains and hew out houses from the mountains. Remember Allah's favor and do not corrupt the earth with wickedness and bad deeds. Will you not fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I am indeed your true messenger. And that was said by the, the Prophet Saleh. Fear Allah and follow me. But the elders of the Tamud tribe holding onto their old ways, arrogantly scorned and belittled him. The idea of the day of judgment, they called Saleh a foolish liar and branded him and his followers as evil and did not trust him. Finally, Prophet Saleh tested them by Allah's own she-camel. He threatened them with a punishment if they mistreated her, but they heedlessly, knowingly had her slaughtered. They did not listen. Then, haughtily challenged Saleh. They very ragely challenged the Prophet if he was really Allah's messenger to bring down his punishment upon them. Saleh then told them they had only three days to live in their homes before Allah was done. Even then, instead of repenting, instead of saying sorry to Allah and saying sorry to Saleh, they plotted to kill him. But before they could carry out their evil plans and ideas, Allah brought them down with a terrible earthquake and he destroyed them all. Allah's best friend. Now who would like to know who is Allah's best friend? Long, long ago, about 40,000 years ago, in a faraway land in Iraq, a boy named Ibrahim, also known as Abraham, was born in a village of Ur. He was so gracious. He was so tender, hearted and pure in faith that gave Allah his wisdom, that Allah gave his wisdom when he was still a child and made him his best friend and made him a great prophet. Even when he was a young boy, he started preaching he started talking about the right path, but his town people did not like him talking. They became angry and furious, and they tried to kill him by hurting him. But Allah was with him. Allah commanded the fire, O oh fire, be cool and peaceful for Ibrahim. A miracle took place, and the fire, instead of hurting Ibrahim alayhi salam, the, the fire became cool and did not hurt him. So the moral of this story is that the faith of Allah is only the one thing that is a barrier between the believer and the disbeliever. How Ibrahim alayhi salam came to know Allah. Ibrahim's desire to find out the truth grew and grew 
One night, while observing the sky, Ibrahim salam, noticed a particularly bright star in the sky. This is my Lord, he said. But when it set, he said, I do not love that which fades. After some experience with the moon and the sun, Ibrahim announced, I will turn my face to him who has created the heavens and the earth and live a righteous life. The Prophet Ibrahim salam, grew up and married. When a beautiful son was born to his wife, Hajar, Allah ordered Ibrahim salam, to take the mother and the baby, Ismail, to a place known as Mecca. I think we've talked about Mecca a lot, haven't we? Can you remember? It took them a long time to reach the lonely barren valley near two small hills called Safa and Marwa to reach. Ibrahim salam, ordered by Allah to leave his baby there along with his wife. <clears throat> then he departed, he left. Little Ismail soon began to cry for water. Hajar, his mum, ran from one hill to another. But there was not a drop of water to drink, nor was there any human beings anywhere. Allah then mercifully performed a miracle, a spring later known as, a spring water known as Zamzam, gushed from beneath the baby's feet. Hajar then gave some fresh spring water to her thirsty child. And so his wife was saved. Ismail and his mother began to live in the valley and because of the Zamzam spring water, <clears throat> more people gradually settled there. They heard of the news and the miracle, so they wanted to see it, so they rushed to Mecca. So the moral of the story here is that the believers who, despite the hardship, despite means even if it's really hard, they forget about the hardship. They follow the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah will help them in many, many ways with miracles. Just as the child Ismail was saved by the miracle of the Zamzam spring water that Allah had given them. That Allah had provided for them. <coughs> the great sacrifice. One night... Prophet Ibrahim salam, dreamt, he dreamt that to please his Lord, he was to sacrifice his son. Ismail, Ismail, was that the child? Ismail was still a child, but he was a brave boy. When his father told him, he must obey Allah's command. Without hesitating, he did so. Do what you're commanded, Father, God willing. You will find me steadfast. Ibrahim salam, then took his son to a place, now known as Mina, a valley near Mecca. Satan appeared there and tried to make Ibrahim salam, not do the sacrifice for his son. But Ibrahim salam just pelted him with pebbles. As soon as Ibrahim alayhi salam took up a knife to sacrifice Ismail, his son, Allah sent down angel Jibril with a ram. A ram is a little bit like a sheep, but more bigger. To be the sacrifice instead. So Allah was pleased with the readiness of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam to sacrifice his beloved son that he was commanded the believers to observe this day as Eid al-Adha or the feast of sacrifice and this is to mark this is to mark the readiness of Ibrahim salam and how much he put his trust in Allah and wanted to sacrifice his son for the sake of Allah 
So we call it Eid al-Adha. Now let's read the story of building the Kaaba. Thanks to the miracle of the Zamzam spring in the valley, some people began to live there. Slowly it became a small city which later came to be known as Mecca. Ismail grew up as a strong and loving youth. The Prophet Ibrahim salam, and Ismail were ordered by Allah to build the house of God. <clears throat> the Kaaba was in Mecca. They took stones from nearby hills and started to work. For this sacred land, Ibrahim salam, prayed, O oh my Lord, make this land secure and provide its people with fruits, such of them as believers in Allah and the last day. As the Prophet Ibrahim salam, and Ismail laid the very first stones in, on which the Kaaba would stand, they prayed again and they said, O oh our Lord, accept this from us. You are the all-hearing, you are the all-seeing. They further prayed, Our Lord, make us bow to you and make our offspring of a nation which bows to you and shows us our ways of worship. They also prayed for a prophet to be born in their family who would teach wisdom to the people and purify their faith. Their prayer was answered many years later and this is when we know that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born to the people who came after them. Prophet Ibrahim salam, was ordered by Allah to clean the Kaaba for those who came there to pray and they called the people to Hajj. Allah spoke thus, the Prophet Ibrahim salam, call, call all the people to make the pilgrimage. They shall come to you on foot and on the backs of swift camels. Who's seen a camel before? They shall come to you from every deep raven. And so Allah made, and so Allah made it a duty for all Muslims male and female, to go on Hajj once in a lifetime. It's also one of the five pillars of Islam. Today, over two million people from around the world gather in Mecca. They all come together to do the same thing, to perform the sacred duty. Now, the moral of this story is that believers will promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to follow the example set by our beloved Prophet Ibrahim salam, and his family doing Allah's abiding duty to Allah, whatever it may be, basing their lives on the truth and if necessary giving up life's comforts and pleasures to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will be their focus a goal in which they will never be turned aside by the forces of evil. So they will always praise to, pray to Allah and glorify Him alone and worship Allah alone. The honoured guest, I would love to read this chapter to you, but I think I will save this for our next episode. The honoured guests, Let's find out more next time on Bedtime Stories. Thank you so much, my lovelies, for joining me today. And I hope you enjoy the story of Bedtime Stories. And I will see you again soon. Have a good night. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.